Hi guys, this is Catherine here. And um, I just want to let you know, usually I don't tell you what I'm drinking for coffee today, but you, um, on most days, but today I'm trying a Dalgona, Dalgona, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Anyways, I think the mixture originated in South Korea, but not quite sure. Anyways, you, um, my husband and I found this video on YouTube about how to make it. So we tried it and it works. So if you are a coffee fan, I definitely encourage you to go find out the YouTube videos for how to make Dalgona coffee. It's really good. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and start with the prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fix this. As you can see, my hair is getting really long. I need a desperate need of a haircut. Anyways, so this is the month of May. And for Catholics, usually um, we um, do a May crowning on um, our Marian statues to um, just give honor to Mary, um, just to um, show her queenship and how much we love her and um, honor her. And um, for those of you who are not Catholic, no, we do not worship Mary. We honor her. So just like you honor your own mother, and Father, it is one of the commandments, honor thy father and mother. We do the same thing for the Virgin Mary because Jesus loved her and honored her. So we should do likewise. So um, along with May crownings, um, if you don't have a Marian statue or a garden statue at home, um, some people will actually do like little Marian gardens and put little uh, a statue um, of Mary in that garden. But if you're like me, don't have a Mary statue, um, to put out in the garden, or you have a notorious black thumb and are terrified about doing this big flower bed um, to go along with a Marian garden tradition, I have a really simple technique for you. So um, I tried doing this video outside a second ago, but the light outside was just messing with my camera. Excuse me. And so I couldn't see what was on the screen. And then when I was, when I could, then um, I, I just looked dark. It was all shadow. So we're doing it inside. Um, when I go back and re-edit the um, picture, the, what do they call it? The, the thumbnail picture for the video, I'll have an actual picture of um, what the finished product looks like. So um, at the moment, when you see, um, if you clicked on as this was live, you didn't see, you just saw me holding a bucket. But um, when I go back and re-edit the thumbnail, you'll see the finished product. So like I said, I am a, I have a notorious black thumb. So if I have a plant, I almost always kill it. And I do my best to water it on a regular basis. And it, it just never works. So, um, and I don't have a Mary statue, so I don't feel comfortable doing a big flower bed and I don't have an outdoor Mary statue to do an actual Mary in garden. So I improvised. Um, my husband and I, we own cats and we have two. And um, so when we go to, to the pet store, we go and get the buckets of litter. This is just the, the, cheap, the cheap buckets of litter and we just get refills every once in a while when we need to. And we had, and then there are some days we'd go out, like when we were going out for mass, like, oh my gosh, it's trash night. We need to go change out the litter. And oh, we forgot to bring the litter buckets. So we just go buy more buckets. Well, they start to accumulate after a while, as you can imagine. And we don't want to just throw them, the, throw them away because they, they're useful. So I decided to turn or recycle one into an actual flower pot. So I went, um, what you have to do just to make sure that your flower pots will actually drain is I didn't, this, this bucket hasn't been used yet for that purpose, but just get a drill and you can do this yourself or you can be like me and get your husband to do it for you. So thank you, my wonderful husband for doing it. And you just drill a hole about, you know, just big enough for the water to drain out. So you don't, if you do over water on accident or you water it first thing in the morning and then oops, it rains, it has some, the water has some place to go cheaper brand because a little bit goes a long way and you can use it on anything. You can use it on plastic, glass, metal, wood, and it works. Most things when you paint them, no matter what the surface is, nine times out of 10, you need to put a primer on it just to keep, make sure that whatever is on the surface doesn't leak through whatever you're designing on the top. With chalk paint, you don't need to do that. You just put a couple of coats of it on whatever you're painting and you're good to go. So on mine, I had, um, this one was black, but I colored mine green and I just used 
a craft sponge brush to just cover the entire bucket with chalk paint and it took three coats. And if you live in a really humid climate, it might take an hour or a little bit longer to dry. But if you live in the desert like I do, it took like five, 10 minutes for a side to dry. So by the time I was done painting one side, I'd move on to the next. And as soon as that second side was dry, the first side was, or as soon as I was done with the second side, the first side was dry. So it was, it took me maybe like 15, 20 minutes to do three coats of one bucket. So it's really fast, really easy. Then what you're going to need is I know this is my Peter Rabbit coloring book. So this isn't the coloring book that I use. I don't even remember where I got my um, picture of Virgin Mary to use. I did not draw nor paint. Well, no, I painted it myself, but I didn't draw the actual image onto the box. I traced it. That's right. I cheated. I traced it. So this is a trick I've taught um, even my art club students. And I've taught this to some of my catechism students when we've done art projects in CCD that um, just get a coloring book or um, if there's a picture that you have at home already, that you have a Virgin Mary that you like, you can get some tracing paper. If you already have some, I do because I cheat all the time. Take a small piece, take a piece of tracing paper just to cover up the picture that you want to use and trace over it. So the trick is you also need a pencil. Any kind of pencil will work. It can be mechanical pencil or just a regular wood pencil. And all you're going to do is you can use, I'm shedding, um, tracing paper and you just trace with pencil over the image that you want to put on your flower pot. Um, and so those of you who are following this um, channel and you're not on the Catechist Facebook page, if you like this idea, you can use this with any image too later on, even if you're not using it for a Marian garden. But you just trace a picture and then on the back of your tracing paper, you'll see the lines of what you trace, but on the back, you just retrace it. So you'll have like a mirror image on the back of what you had in the front. This part takes a little, it's a little more time consuming. So if you have a younger child that doesn't want to do this, you can do it yourself really quick. I think this took me a total of five minutes and I had a pretty big picture that took up the whole side of the bucket. Um, so you trace that and then you take your, the image that you, you know, obviously not the whole book, but just your picture. And then you, retrace the correct side. So if you want to use the uh, mirror image, you like the way the direction goes better with the near image, you can retrace it that way or just the normal way it goes and then trace back over the lines. And then your image will be copied onto what you've already painted. So you'll have a nice way of going over it. So you have that image on there. So I cheated, I just traced it on there. There's nothing wrong with tracing something onto your surface because it's a great way to learn how to draw. It's how um, you get you get that muscle memory for learning how to draw anything the more you trace it. Um, if you think back to when you were in kindergarten, first grade, or when your child was, when they were learning how to do letters and numbers, they always have them trace it out first, right? Before they do it themselves because they build up that muscle memory. It's the same thing with drawing. You just trace it on there. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, you can print out an image of your favorite saint or the Virgin Mary or a cross or whatever you want to use for your garden. And the same thing. And just, um, I would recommend taking your paper that you print out and stick it on like a window or something so you can see through it. Um, and then just gently go over the lines and then just trace it back onto your image, your um, bucket. Now, after that, now, like I said, with a chalk paint, it's it's gonna, I think mine was like seven bucks for one container, and that's how many, eight fluid ounces. It's gonna seem pretty pricey, but like I said, I've I've had this for a couple of years, and um, it's lasted. So, and I've used it on several, several projects. I think one of these could use like, you would use on one big dresser. So for small projects like this, this is gonna last a long time. And it's one of the cheaper ones. So go for cheaper ones. Um, for painting the actual dress, the face, things like that, um, you can go for something really cheap like Apple Barrel. They're like a dollar, I think approximately a dollar a container. Um, they're a little more watery, so you might have to use a few more layers with them, but they work just fine. Um, a lot of YouTube artists use them, this brand too. Um, if you want something more mid-grade, uh, Liquitex Basics is a nice mid-grade cheaper. It's still kind of water. It's not like per amazing um, brand, but Sorry, it's upside down. But this is what I use normally for just fun painting on my own. 
And then you can use, again, you can use sponge, get a big package of these sponge brushes. You can use the cheap brushes you find at Walmart. They're not great, but if you ruin them, you're out five bucks at most. Um, or you can do what I did for like smaller details. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I buy makeup brushes, I try to get the cheaper ones just because I don't have the budget for the nice big one, nice expensive ones. So they always come with these little brushes. I have no idea like what exactly they're, I know they're for eyeshadow. I know that, but I don't know exactly how to use them nor really care. So I just end up using them for detail brushes in my painting. So if you want to use something like that, you already have um, extra makeup brushes that you don't use. You can use that. Makeup sponges are also great. Or if you want to get really messy, you can use your fingers. Um, Q-tips are also a great substitute for paint brushes too. So look around your house, see what you can use if you don't have the paint brushes and you don't have the time to go or don't feel like going out that um, day to get it. So as soon as you have your image traced out onto your bucket and you've painted it however you want, then the next thing you do is get, this is Rust-Oleum brand, but you can use any brand you want. It's I got the matte. Um, if you want a shinier gloss, go look for something that says the gloss finish, I think. But I like matte finishes, so just spray this over it. I did a couple of, um, so, and now it's good to go. So now, so then, once you have your image painted um, on there, the last step again is the enamel, um, the Rust-Oleum. And then you just add your regular potting soil and any um, flowers that you like. Um, try to make sure also, just a tip, that um, check the little tags on your flowers before you plant them to make sure that they are getting, you, you're getting flowers that require the same amount of sun. So for example, if you have a flower that needs a lot of all day sun, don't mix it in with ones that need very little sun. Otherwise you're gonna kill your plants. So just fill up your bucket to, um, not all the way full, but close to being full. So that way, depending on how big your flower, if, they, if they're gonna grow up high, you might not need to um, put in as much dirt. If they just kind of stay low to the surface, then put in more dirt and then just arrange them. So for my bucket, I used, um, let's see what flowers we use, forget-me-nots. And I think they're called violas. We call them violas at our house because that's my husband's favorite instrument to play. Um, and we got orange and blue colors because He's from Boise and that's, he went to Boise State. So got to use the orange and blue color. So we had that and then we got a couple of ivies to put in the mix. So we have a variety of colors with the green. Um, and then you have your own little portable mirroring garden. You can do something like this that can be for outside. And um, if you want to do it inside, if you want, you can save the lid to your bucket if your bucket has a lid. And um, so that way you can set your bucket um, and it has a little dish so it doesn't have to roll. The water will not leak onto your floor if you want to do it inside. Um, or if you don't want to do that and you just want to keep it out someplace where it's not going to ruin like your deck or your house outside, um, you can save the lid and use that as a paint palette to mix your colors for paint palettes. So, or for your painting project, excuse me. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions on how I did my Marion bucket slash flower pot, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have any questions about Catholicism in general, or you have um, any suggestions on topics you'd like me to cover in the future, also let me know in the comments below. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button and free, free oh my gosh, I had too much coffee, I can't even talk, sorry. Feel free to um, share this video with whomever you Think would enjoy it and um, enjoy the outdoors while you can. So God bless. Have a great day.